Welcome! Today I'm gonna show you how I do agate wear or soil wear if you like where you combine different colors of clay and then when you throw it on the potter's wheel they kind of give these swirly sort of uh, patterns that are really beautiful especially I like them for bowls because there's so much surface where you can see these beautiful patterns so let's move on with that You can make agate ware in uh, many ways. You can combine different kinds of clay. I've done something where you combine uh, stoneware and porcelain. It's a little bit tricky because it may not work together so well. <laughs> but go ahead and try it. You can also have different colors of stoneware, different colors of porcelain. And porcelain is what I like to use the most. The reason for that is that porcelain is white. Super white if you have a high quality porcelain. I work in a porcelain called Audrey Blackman, which is super white, and if you throw it very thin, it can be translucent. I don't throw that thin, <laughs> but it's super white. So next thing is you need something to contrast that white color with. So you need some colored clay that you mix with the white clay. To do that, I uh, use uh, body stains mason stains if you're in america we don't use mason stains so much here in europe you can get it but they're quite expensive there are other kinds of body stains you can also use oxides <coughs> and other colorants uh, i have mixed a few different um, colors already um, the way that i mix it i usually just mix about a kilo of each color because the way i'm going to show you that i do the agate wear is that i use very little of the color Clay. I think I like that so you have the big part of the bowl in white and then you only have these stripes of color. That's what I like. Maybe you like it differently. Um, so I already mix some colors. The way that I mix it is I take about a kilo of clay. A kilo of clay is easy because then it's easy to calculate the percentages. You have to look at the colorants you're using, what percentages of um, colorant you need to put in. It's typically somewhere between 2% or 10%. It, maybe even less. If it's a cobalt, you need less. If it's a yellow like this, you need at least 10%. So look at uh, whatever the supplier of the current um, is advising you to do. What I do is I mix up the, 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 the stains in a little bit of water, very little, because if you add too much, then the clay will be too wet. It's just easier if it's like a paste. And then I put it into the, I mix out the, the, the clay, like a flat surface, and I mix in the colorant, and then it's time to mix it. I use gloves, because <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's super dirty, and uh, especially with the black one. And uh, then you have to mix it, and you have to mix it, and, and, um, and do it a lot, because you need, you want a consistent color throughout the clay. Then when the clay is mixed and the color looks good, then it's actually best to leave it for a week, two weeks, just wrap it up very tight because um, at this point the consistency of this clay is different than the uncolored clay. And that's one of the challenges when you want to throw with multiple colors, that the clay may not react exactly the same way. So um, these have already been uh, on the shelf for, for a few weeks. and. Um, so today I'm going to use, I'm going to do something in the uh, Ukrainian colors <laughs> to celebrate, uh, to support my friends in Ukraine. Uh, so yellow and blue is what I'm going to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out some thin coils and that I'm going to use when I'm throwing. So let's do that. I'm not very good with coils and um 
but luckily enough they don't have to be super precise for this because we're gonna mix them into the, the clay that we're gonna throw anyway so it doesn't matter so much so I'm just gonna roll them like this this is good enough and then let me just get a knife I'm gonna cut them into some pieces that I think will fit the ball that I'm gonna make so I think this is gonna be good so this I'm gonna leave, leave a little bit bigger so that was the yellow now the blue and as you can probably see it's nice and moist but not too much i wrap it up right away because i want to keep it moist and nice to work with So, that's it. Now we're ready to throw. you can do um, exit wear. Some people cut slices in different colors and put them together. That requires a lot of colored clay and the colors are expensive. Also I found that there's a higher risk of getting hair bubbles. So instead I uh, center it and open it and then I use the little coils that I was making and I put it um, outside and inside and that requires very little of the colored clay and I tend to get less air bubbles. And I like the fact that you get a lot of white and then just a few colors that will swirl around the pot. So that's the technique I will show you today. centered and it's opened. Um, one of the problems in using the colored coil uh, technique is that if you just put them on top of this it will be a very thin layer of color uh, and then when you um, when you trim it which is something you have to do with, um, with the swirl wear to get the color from it off, uh, then they disappear <laughs> because it's only on the surface. So what I do is I cut into the clay some grooves and that's why I'm gonna put in the, the coils so like this
And this clay I'll just reclaim. And now I'm making it even, but actually just to prove that it doesn't have to be so, I will make it, I will make one extra. <laughs> it's just on one side. Because it's going to be swirled around anyway. I usually dip them really quickly in water and just scrape some of it off. And then press it into the clay and make sure you don't get any bubbles. Or at least try. <laughs> Here's some yellow. So now comes the hard part because now we need to get it you know, massaged into each other so it like become one clay ball again um, and that takes a little bit of work. So I'm just going to spin it around using my hands and a sponge and it's going to feel really strange to begin with but you spend a little bit of time um, on um, sort of like when, when you were opening it. Um, <laughs> And just shaving a little bit again, and then suddenly it will feel more consistent, and that's when you can start doing your actual form. Sometimes you need to use a rip to um, to get the surface um, completely even. Um, there could be some little bumps left from um, from applying the colored uh, coils. Unlike most other colors uh, dealing in um, puzzling, I actually use quite a lot of water. Uh, this is not something I figured out, but something I learned from the potter I'm working with, or he's trying to teach me <laughs> how to do puzzling. And he uses lots of water. And some potters will tell you not to do that, but it makes it kind of easier to throw the puzzle in, except you have to be really fast when you throw, because it does get very soft this way.
So, that's a bowl. After the parts have uh, dried to like a soft leather hard stage, maybe a little more than that, um, you need to trim them. Because there's still going to be this uh, layer of sludge and mud that kind of hides the, 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 the sharpness and, and the colors of um, the color clay. So, even if you don't like trimming, this is something you need to do for naked wear. Um, I love trimming, so to me it's fine. And I'm going to do something that a lot of potters are going to tell you you should never do. I'm going to trim the inside of the bowl too, because I want to get that that uh, uh, shady layer away to so reveal the colors. This is also a good option to clean up the the, uh, the form inside. <laughs> In this case, it's actually good the form, so I don't need to clean up the form, but I do need to um, to reveal the colors. So I'm just going to take off a very tiny layer. And this is where, as I said in the beginning, that if um, if you didn't layer the colors deep enough into the clay, then when you trim them. You're essentially trimming away all the colors, and of course you don't want that. In this case, I don't know if you can see it there. Maybe if I trim on the outside, you can see it. Can you see how much stronger the colors come out now? It may be difficult to see in the video, but trust me, they do. And this is an important process in uh, the edit layer. Once I'm done trimming uh, this uh, bowl uh, upside up, I'm going to turn it around, trim the foot, and then it's easy, yeah, ready to dry and fire. Now I'm ready with uh, a couple of the first uh, edit layer bowls I made in this design, and. To begin with, I started out doing exactly as I always do with this uh, puzzling. I gave it a clear glaze, uh, and as you see, it comes out beautiful, very strong color, um, a nice surface and everything. This is a nice bowl, and this is exactly what I was looking for. But then in the second fire uh, we did, I work in a different studio when I work with uh, Puzzlein, and um, the assistant that uh, initiated the fire of the, or the big fire of these uh, pots and some other pots, made a mistake of running a glaze program. So it was fired all the way up to 1300 degrees Celsius. And that means that the clay vitrifies. And as some of you know, if the clay is vitrifies, the pores are almost closed and it means that uh, it's more difficult to glaze. It's not impossible, but you need to adapt the glaze for vitrified clays. So you basically add a little more water and you have to dip them a longer time. And it's just different and it's more difficult. So uh, then I was left with uh, some pots that uh, I wasn't sure if I could actually glaze. But then I discovered something. I actually think it looks better. Because then now it have this matte satin sort of uh, surface, and I mean it's it's difficult to see on the video, but I actually like this better. It's uh, 
it's got a beautiful, like, uh, soft texture um, to it or, or surface to it. It's, uh, I just like it more. So then I decided to um, not try and glaze this, even though it, it would have been possible, it would have been difficult, it would have been a bigger risk of a failure, but I decided to keep it like this. However, when you, when you get this uh, out of uh, Basic Fire, um, this is another one, of course you can't feel it, but if you, if you touch with your hand here, it's a, there's a very, very tiny little, not grains because there's no grog in this, but it's just a, a little bit rough on the surface. Which, I mean, it, it's okay, you could, you could use it like that. But what I did then is, um, I grinded it. And I'm using this um, paper, this is a, a special paper that is uh, made for water grinding. I think you can see here. Um, it's, um, you, can, you can buy this in, in rolls, on sheets like this. Um, and I grind these to get rid of that, um, that grainy surface. I use two different kinds of, um, of mesh. Uh, one is uh, 320. Um, I don't know if you can see it here yet, 320. Um, and the other one is 1000. And so this one is a little more coarse, it's not very coarse. It's, it's, these, these kind of papers are also used to, um, to grind like uh, cars. Uh, so you grind it very, very finely before you spray paint it. So this is a little more coarse and this is very, very fine. It's a thousand uh, mesh, it's very, very fine. So what I basically do is, let me just show you. I cut out um, pieces because I found it's much easier to work with. Um, so I cut out a piece like that and Cut it in two. Then I put, let me just take this, and I just put um, this so it doesn't shake around and I don't mess up the table too much. And um, then I dip it in water. I have a bucket of water here. Uh, I usually do it by my sink, but it's easier to show you here. Then I just add, maybe even add some water to the bowl. And then it's just a matter of Grinding, it's a little noisy, but um, as you see, Already now it feels much better. If there's any like little crack, uh, little uh, bumpy things or something, you can also use a diamond uh, uh, sponge, uh, but of course you can't <laughs> use that on the inside. Um, so now we have, um, we've done the first part. So before I move on with the, with the finer mesh, I'm just gonna clean it uh, with a sponge to get rid of all the little particles that comes from, um, from the grinding paper and also to see if, if I did it well enough. I think this is good. So let me just cut. You can use it a few times, but they do wear out quickly, but they're, they're very cheap, so, so um, don't use them too much. Let me take the next one here. And this is the very fine one. So again, I'm gonna dip it in water. And so you probably want to grind it a little bit more, but I'm just going to show you how it works. Um, you can quickly feel how much better it gets. Yeah, and now, <laughs> of course you can't feel this, but now it's smooth, like baby skin. <laughs> it's like, it's very, very different. It doesn't actually change the color or anything, but it makes it completely nice and uh, smooth. So, um, of course, you also wanna do this um, 
on the outside. Um, I just did it on the inside to show you. So that's the first tip. So now, of course, you, you will ask yourself, is it waterproof? Um, and yes, it is, because it has been fired to 1300 degrees Celsius. So the clay has melted, it is vitified. So it is actually waterproof. But just to make it a little more <laughs> waterproof, <laughs> uh, just to make absolutely sure that it is completely waterproof, I decided uh, to add uh, another component to these uh, bowls. And that is um, the liquid quartz. Um, I know I uh, mentioned this um, before. Uh, this is a food safe product that I get from Australia. Uh, it's made of uh, nanoparticles, uh, quartz. Uh, and quartz, of course, is not toxic at all. So basically what we do with this is that we um, oh, I, uh, add this to the bowl. So let me do, just show you quickly how I do that. The liquid quad can be applied by pouring it, uh, brushing it, uh, whatever way you want. Uh, the great thing about this is that you cannot add too much because once it goes in and closes the pores, it just doesn't absorb anymore and then you're left with something. It is rather expensive, so um, I'm trying to, um, to use as little as possible and not waste anything. So you definitely don't want just to add it and throw it out because it's, yeah, it is very expensive. But in this case, I'm just going to brush it on. And it's very easy, just brush it on. And of course, it's difficult to see, um, I think, on the video. But um, it's very easy to work with. And as I said, you can't add too much because once uh, you start adding it, it closes the pores and then it uh, becomes sealed and um, it won't absorb anymore. So you just add until it starts pouring a little pool down here, and um, and then you know it's ready. Again, this doesn't change the surface at all. It doesn't have any color, and it doesn't. Um, yeah, well, it doesn't add a layer. It's completely transparent. And um, so now I added it. I'm just gonna pour out if there's anything left. It doesn't look like I can get anything out. And then I'm just going to leave it uh, for a few moments um, to make sure that it's fully absorbed into the, into the bowl. So now the bowl is ready. It is applied with this uh, liquid quartz and um, it's dried. So now let's test and see how uh, waterproof it actually is. Um, I don't know if you can see this problem. You see, it's, it almost feels like it's a glazed surface. So um, it doesn't absorb into the clay at all. And it's just like it was glazed. Just wipe it off and um, it's perfect. And I tested it, it works great also in dishwashers. So um, it's just as... Um, it's just as waterproof, food safe as uh, any other pot would be with glaze. I like this. We look at the difference again. It's a matter of taste, I know. It is stronger uh, colors. It, it becomes more contrasty with, uh, with the glaze. But um, I just like this, uh, this uh, sort of satin uh, finish it gets here. So that's about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please like, subscribe, um, comment, share, whatever you like, <laughs> and come back soon again. I'm going to have another video next Sunday. See you soon.